Hi, I'm Frank Owen, PolyX Engineering, San Luis Obispo, California. In the following video, I uh, developed the equation of motion of a pendulum, not a simple pendulum, but a pendulum um, that is extended in uh, space so that we have to take into account the um, um, resistance to rotation uh, when a moment is applied to this pendulum. This is being done uh, as part of an experiment, an online experiment that um, I'm conducting with students from the Dakar American University of Science and Technology. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more details on the experiment, you can write me at uh, fowen at polyxengineering.com. Polyxengineering is all one word. Thank thanks for watching. Okay, so uh, we're going to do the uh, uh, impose Newton's second law on a, a pendulum, uh, but the pendulum itself is an oddly shaped um, object. So uh, to impose Newton's second law, FBD equals MAD, okay? And then our oddly shaped object, I'm just going to draw some weird shape. Okay, like so, and then we're going to draw it twice. It won't, uh, I'm not precise enough to make it exactly the same, but the, uh, what's implied is that these are the same. And we're going to pivot the shape about a point, and I'll call this O. Now, uh, I have actually deflected this. Our center of mass is going to be down here somewhere. So let me draw that. on both of them. Okay. And then um, uh, we have some kinematics going on here. Um, like I said, I've deflected it. So I'm going to draw uh, a line down from the pivot point through the center of gravity, but then I'm going to draw a vertical line here also. And this angle here uh, actually, I can show it like this. I'll just draw another parallel vertical line. Is theta. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to use a coordinate system that uh, is polar. And so, uh, we go back up from the center of mass to the, uh, um, the pivot point. And that's going to be our R direction. And then, uh, uh, this is theta here. So uh, going parallel or perpendicular to R will be th our theta direction, okay? So I'm just uh, uh, establishing those as uh, uh, our framework in which to work. And now we need uh, our forces on um, the object, on the FBD. So we know we have gravity acting down. So this is going to be mg, okay? And then we have uh, pivot forces at the top, uh, and uh, I'll just draw those in the R direction. So this will be FR, and then we'll have one in the theta direction too, F theta. So those are the only forces that are uh, being applied here. <clears throat> now on the, uh, uh, F, on the MAD, uh, you do everything at the mass center as always. So, uh, uh, we draw a uh, MA vector here, and this will be uh, MAR. And then uh, this is sort of mechanical the way you do this. In other words, just automatic MA theta. But the other thing, because we have the resistance to rotation, we actually have to have a, um, a rotational vector here. And this is going to be our J uh, times. Uh, theta double dot. Now we didn't, uh, we don't have that on a normal pendulum because uh, the pendulum bob uh, uh, has very little resistance to rotation. The mass is concentrated around a point, so uh, this resistance to rotation is very small and this effect can be ignored. Okay, now uh, 
what we want to do is we want to be strategic about this and, and try to, we don't know these pivot forces up here, so it would be nice to exclude them from our analysis. And we can do that because we can sum uh, the moments about point O, okay? And if we do that, since those two forces act through point O, uh, we can ignore them, or they have zero moments, so they just don't enter into the picture. Now, uh, 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 one thing that I didn't put here is we have a length here, L, and that's the length from the, um, the pivot point to the center of mass. <clears throat> we will need that. So uh, if we uh, sum the moments about point O, um, the only force that has a moment about point O is the weight. And so what we'll have there is we'll have that force and uh, this has a clockwise moment, so this is going to be negative, and there's the force. And then the moment arm is this distance right here, and as you can see, that's going to be uh, L sine theta. And then over on the right-hand side, we actually have uh, two things that have moments about point O, so equals. Um, the MAR vector goes through point O, so it has no moment about point O, but MA theta does, and it is counterclockwise, so it will be positive, so MA theta, but then we have to add also J uh, theta double dot. Okay? So that's our equation of motion. Now we can uh, um, simplify this. <clears throat> Or, or expand upon it. <clears throat> One thing that I can say uh, just from kinematics, uh, A theta. So, yes? It's not MA theta times L. Oh, yes, you're right. So it's MA theta. I need to include the moment arm. Who, who pointed that out? Adama. Oh, Adama. Hey, you're smarter than I am. Okay. <laughs> Um, all right, so, um, yeah, so there was a mistake there, and, I, and I'm glad you pointed it out. You're good, very good. Um, we don't have to do that with J theta uh, double dot uh, because it's a moment, and, and the moment are, 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 that's the same. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to multiply by a moment arm if you have a, a moment like uh, a rotational uh, um vector. All right, so uh, a theta dot is going to be equal to, uh, well, this is actually equal to theta double dot. And, um, uh, uh, well, that's not exactly true. It's times L. Okay. Because the, the units for this are going to be meters per second squared, and the units for this are radians per second squared, and so we have to multiply. But kinematically, uh, this is what you would get for a tangential acceleration. This is the expression for the tangential acceleration. It's the uh, rotational uh, acceleration times the length out to that point. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and then... Uh, I think that is all we need. Oh, yeah, the other thing is small angles mean that um, uh, uh, sine theta is about equal to theta. So I'm going to put both of these in this equation. Uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll move this over to this side. Let me slide up a little bit so that we don't uh, run off the page. That ought to work. So let me include all of these. Uh, minus MGL theta equals uh, M uh, and then it's going to be L squared theta double dot <clears throat> uh, plus J theta double dot. Okay, now because of the J, we cannot uh, uh, cancel the mass out, which we could do if that term weren't there. We could cancel the mass out. We could cancel one of the L's out, 
And you would see then that we have the uh, same equation of motion that we have for a pendulum where we don't have to consider the resistance to rotation. Uh, but I can, uh, what I want to do, uh, well, let's look at this. Uh, I can weigh the object, so I can actually get the mass from that. G, we know what that is, uh, 9.81 meters per second squared. L, uh, we need to find the center of mass, but once we find the center of mass, then we can get L. Um, what we don't know uh, is we don't know J. Oh, wait, there's one other thing uh, here. Um, let's see. Uh, how am I going to do that? I can't remember what I did here. Um, I need to get omega in. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Uh, here we go. Um, if I reorganize this, then I get... Um, um, theta double dot, and it's going to be uh, multiplied by ML squared plus J plus, so I moved, I'm, I'm using that, and then I'm moving this over to this side, and then I'm swapping the sides, MGL theta is equal to zero. So there's my equation of motion put into the proper format. Now remember what happens here is this, theta double dot plus MGL divided by ML squared plus J theta is equal to zero. Now when you get it into this format with uh, one here as a coefficient and this here as a uh, uh, the coefficient of the theta term, uh, what this is right here, this is our omega n squared. Okay, so we can say that uh, omega n squared is equal to mgl over ml squared plus j. And that omega n squared, or omega n, is something that we can measure with the dynamic experiment. Okay, so uh, we can measure this, we can weigh it, we can measure this with a dynamic experiment, uh, swinging it, counting the, or timing uh, a certain number of periods, a certain number of oscillations, and dividing the, the time by the number of oscillations, that gives us the period, that then we can use two pi over uh, the period is equal to omega n. So we can measure omega n. We can weigh it. G is equal to 9.81. Uh, with our hanging experiment, we can determine where what L is. So we know everything in this equation except for J. So we can solve this equation for J and, um, uh, and then with the measurements that we've taken, uh, we can um, find out what J is. So let's do that. So I'm going to take this off and keep it nearby. Uh, maybe I'll do this. Yeah, this is not a bad plan. So there's our equation. Okay. And now uh, if we solve that for J, so ML squared plus J is equal to MGL over uh, omega N squared. So I just swapped, uh, uh, I just multiplied uh, this side, well, both sides by, well, no, I multiplied this side by, uh, well, yeah, I multiplied, <laughs> I moved this up here and I moved that down there, and that works, okay? So I multiplied both sides by ML uh, squared plus J, and um, then I uh, multiply both sides by 1 over omega N squared, and I wind up with this equation right here. Uh, and then I solve for J. J is equal to MGL over omega N squared uh, minus ML squared. Okay? And we know or can measure everything on the right-hand side. So this allows us to calculate J. Now, um, even though I did it 
uh, what, about what looks like the z-axis, the same analysis applies if we, if we turn this on end and we look at it uh, from the side also, from like a, uh, I think we have an, uh, an axis like this and we have an axis like this. But the same analysis applies. You know, you've got, you've got an oddly shaped mass um, and um, you, you, you have to take into account the fact that there's a resistance to rotation. So even if you turn this on end and you look at it from the side and you look at it about two other axes, the analysis is exactly the same. Uh, what I've done here is I've looked at it really about our z-axis, and so um, uh, this analysis directly applies to uh, JZ or J0 as they call it in the uh, in the lab manual, but it, it equally applies to the uh, if you, if you think about it or even do it, uh, it would apply to the uh, rotation about the x-axis or about the y-axis or an axis parallel to the y-axis. So it's exactly the same analysis. So um, that's what we're doing in this experiment. We are uh, let me mark them up. Um, we know this. This is 9.81 meters per second squared. Uh, we measure with a dynamic experiment. So timing the oscillations, a number of oscillations, and then dividing that time by the number of oscillations, we get the period. And then uh, we know that omega n is equal to 2 pi over the period. Um, I think we've been using t in here for period, so I'll use t there. Okay. Uh, here we weigh it. Okay. And I weighed it for you. You'll see that. And then L, um, this is the... Uh, hanging experiments. Okay, so uh, that is the way that this would be done on a real object. So I'm going to stop the recording. It's a 15-minute recording.